Welcome to our AcrePro.com Buy Sell uh, edition. And this, of course, Michigan Week edition. I want to thank our folks, uh, at, our friends at AcrePro Midwest Farm Group, our local farm land specialist with decades of experience in Indiana agriculture. No one knows the market better, whether you're doing a 1031 exchange or simply buying and selling farmland. Your local AcrePro agent will walk the land with you and ensure the deal is done right. Tom, I don't know how much you drive around the Lafayette area. The harvest is in. There's the the next phase. Not it's not totally in. I don't think, but uh, the guy, there's a little bit of time for uh, our friends in agriculture to look at yeah. uh, farm buying and all that. And uh, we appreciate Kyle Spray and Company for that. And you also you can you can visit AcrePro.com or call Kyle at seven six five seven seven five six five zero two. You're not you're not a, you're not a big ag guy. <laughs> you have parents or or not parents, but family members that were that were in the ag business over the years. Uh, you know, it's funny when you you tell people you're from Indiana, they always yeah. Think- you're like some farmer or something, you know, when you get outside of the state. And Alan, you and I consider ourselves city slickers, right? <laughs> That's right. In this big city of us. Oh, I can it's, see seen farm fields from my house. And, uh, from sophisticated and, uh, West Lafayette. But no, you know what? I never even detasseled corn, buddy. So I never even earned yeah. my, my <laughs> agriculture, uh, agriculture stripe, so to speak. Yeah, you know, those of us that grew up in West Lafayette, as Tom and I did, a lot of our friends did detassel yeah, corn and, yeah. and and were busy in that and a lot of them very much involved with that. But the point being, Kyle Spray knows it as well as anybody, and we appreciate uh, his support. All right. It's getting a little challenging these days uh, with the buy-sell format. We and I have talked offline a little bit about that as the Boilermakers are really struggling. We know that uh, as much as anything. Purdue now 2-6 and six after a disappointing loss at Nebraska. Heading, uh, is it the old frying pan into the fire this yeah. week when you head to um, uh, the big house and Purdue hasn't been there in quite a while uh, What would, in, uh, what do you say, 2011? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, 2011, uh, Danny Hope was the head coach, right? Right, and that uh, that has been uh, 12 long, hard years. There's been a game or two. There was a game, I think, canceled about in 2020 that. Anyway, that would have happened. You know, right? the, um, yeah, Purdue was, supposed to, Purdue, Purdue was supposed to play up there in 2020, but the pandemic happened, and that they totally redid the schedules, if you remember, and that was right. the game they got dropped. So, Yeah, they, yeah. They gonna, the first pandemic – deal that they were listed i think that was their first game to go to michigan and then it changed and, it and, and then uh and and then, it all, and then, all and they were and they were over here in 2017 at ross aid uh, of course that's the famous game in the heat when harbaugh had his post game ran about the inadequate uh uncooled locker rooms in the in the substandard medical attention remember that it sort of got a little viral attention so yeah and then of course they met just 11 months ago down in India in the Big Big Ten title game. Um, but still, that trip to Ann Arbor, man, was a long time ago, Alan. I, I think I may have still had some hair back in 2011. <laughs> yeah, it's been it, that long. it has been a while. And of course, uh, Michigan has dominated Purdue, but the Purdue, Danny Hope did get that win at Michigan 2009. Uh, that was the last time since I was six years old, and uh, but you were just a baby. I think 1966 when yeah. uh, Purdue beat uh, Purdue beat uh, Michigan. But you know, one thing it's hard to imagine, and we were looking this up. Purdue in the 1960s won four straight games against Michigan, three of I think five straight actually three in a row in the big house by I think a total of five points in 1964, 65 and 66. Of course that game in 66 got Purdue uh, a block punt punt by a 28 year old former, uh, I think he was an, an army army guy that came to Purdue named Frank Burke blocked a punt Purdue beat Michigan. And, and that really helped Purdue that in a win over Illinois get to the first row bowl. Bob Greasy the year before kicked a game-winning field goal, uh, as I recall, in 65 uh, uh, to, to beat the Michigan 17-15. to 15. But they, things have changed since those days and a uh, long time ago, obviously. Yeah. You know, and, Alan, uh, I, can, I, I can probably count on one hand the Purdue wins over Michigan. I've seen – I saw the – I don't think I was there in 76, but I was there in 79. I remember watching that because Michigan had Bubba, Bubba Paris at the offensive tackle – and obviously, I was there in 80, 84. That wasn't a very good Michigan team. I think they went six and five that year. 
And That's then, right. Obviously, 19, I remember 1996, that crazy nine to six game, maybe one of Jim Coletto's last games. I think he had the story where he went in and asked for his job back yeah. after the game. And then I remember, of course, the 2000 game. I wasn't at that game, but that was a, that was a Travis Dorsch game, we'll call it, right? Uh, and I wasn't there. They, they got him over here, too. Remember when they had Justin Siller? They had some crazy game where they beat him over Ross. 48 to 42 in the yeah. hook and ladder play. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Justin Siller. Uh, Corey Sheets had a big game in that day, but Justin Siller came in, played yeah. quarterback. Uh, Curtis Painter was dealing with a separated shoulder. Joey Elliott was hurt. And uh, right, and they win that game. I think that was the only time that I believe Purdue has ever come from two 14 point deficits in a game to win. And they win that one 48 to 42 in the hook and ladder play in the last uh, minute and a half or so. It was a pass to Desmond Tar, Desmond, I think to Greg Orton. To Desmond Tardy, and Desmond wow. Tardy took it the distance, or it was the other way around. I can't remember for sure, but it was uh, oh. a memorable, memorable, beautiful, sunny early November day. Uh, back and kind of it was actually Joe Tiller's last hurrah because, in a lot of ways, now I know they beat Indiana in his last game, but it was the last mm-hmm. kind of hot as new loved uh, approach to football where Purdue kind of threw it all out there. Justin Till, Justin Siller, I should say came in and played terrific at quarterback. Uh, and uh, that was about the, his high point as a quarterback at Purdue. He didn't end up playing receiver a little bit for Danny Hope a year or two later. Tell me, tell, 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 remind me again about the Coletto going back and ask for his job back. Well, that one, that nine to six game, and you're right, um, uh, Scott Dreisbeck, remember the old Michigan quarterback? <laughs> I believe that's who that was. And, of course, Purdue scores the only touchdown in that game, a Rick Tresker to Brian Alford uh, touchdown pass. Yes, Jim Coletto had resigned as um, the after the Wisconsin <laughs> loss. He was so disheartened after that loss. He comes to his press conference, and we're all down there at uh, – at uh, I think it was it was someplace in Chauncey Hill Mall that Joe McConnell and they had the they had they didn't have a press conference it was his radio show Jake's I, I think it was Jake yeah Jake's and Coletto gets yeah. up and talks about you know I'm going to resign and uh, that was after a very mm-hmm. Purdue had a, had like a hundred plays against Wisconsin lost that game up there is very very frustrating a lot of offense uh, did not uh, beat the Badgers it would have been Ron. Would have been Ron Dane's freshman year, I believe. Yeah, man. Anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and I, uh, and it was, a, and so he was so frustrated, ends up deciding, you know, I'm done, and I'm going to resign at the end of this year. Uh, I can remember Morgan Burke sitting there, Purdue's athletic director at the time. But then, lo and behold, they, in a very cold day, uh, Purdue goes out and beats Michigan <laughs> unbelievably. Uh, the next day, uh, Michigan, I believe, ranked in the top 10 at the time. Purdue beats them. Uh, it was 9-3, to three, I think, was the final score. Uh, holds Michigan to a field goal, of all things. And uh, Jim was supposedly, as rumor has it, uh, went back and said, hey, Morgan, I think I'd like to reconsider. Of course, then Purdue went up to Northwestern the following week and should have beaten the Wildcats. Um, they did not. That was when I think it was one of Northwestern's back-to-back Big was, Ten title team. Yeah, and one. Purdue had a chance to beat them up there and did not beat them. It was a very frustrating loss again. Then they yeah. come back and play one of the worst games I can remember, worst bucket games I can remember. Yeah, crushed. And, yeah. and gets beat by with a bunch of turnovers. And, of course, Bill Mallory in his final game beats Jim yeah. Coletto. But, uh, the IU, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the IU, you remember the IU quarterback that day? I do. No, and that wasn't Green, right? It wasn't Trent Green. Chris, Chris, Chris Ditto. Chris Ditto. Trent Green was 1992, of course, in that game with the Jimmy yeah, That was Young a great game in 92 over here. The Jimmy, Jimmy Young, Young uh, interception. But we're trying to digressing. And part of it is we're stalling because we don't have a lot of – Okay, I got one for you. Advice, okay, so, I got yeah. one. Okay, okay. I know, I know we want to be positive. But nobody likes Are a let- depth counter. And everybody wants to be around positive people. But <laughs> buy or sell Alan Carpet. We'll produce cover – the 32 and a half point spread. <laughs> you know, and we and we'll we'll get into that and the history of that as well, because we love to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, I think they will. I think Purdue will cover that spread, and uh, I'll buy that. 
I just think Michigan, though I know there's a lot of things swirling up in Ann Arbor, I, and I'll, I was going to do the buy-sell of how many times in the first 15 minutes of the broadcast. You'll be in the press box, but how many times during the NBC uh, broadcast will they talk about the, uh, the the scandal that's going up there with design stealing, but uh, somewhat facetious. But I, I think Purdue's got a chance to do that. I, I, I do. I think that... Uh, just when you think it's the absolute worst it can be, yeah. and you're going to lose by a hundred, something changes. I'm not saying Purdue's going to win. That would be that would be the biggest upset in the college football season, if not in the last few years of college football. I would think, especially at night up there. But I do think they do. How do you how do you view that? Yeah, I think I agree. You know, I talked to Chris Ballas, the great Chris Ballas, who uh, <laughs> on the Wolverine.com, probably the premier Michigan athletic site, and. Um, you know, Chris thinks that Michigan's going to have a circle the wagons mentality here over all these allegations and this investigation. You know how it is, Alan, when you're accused of something, um, they're doubling, well, I don't know, doubling down, but they've just sort of, it's kind of galvanized them, like I said. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's still just allegations, right? Although the, there's a lot of smoke there. So uh, he thinks they're really going to use that as a focal point and a motivating factor that, hey, you think we've beaten you guys because we're stealing your signals? Well, watch us kick your butt anyway. Yeah. You know, so there's something to be said for that. They had an off week too, Alan. They've had two weeks here to sit and stew on this. And uh, there's a lot on the line for the season still. They're unbeaten, right? They're not just thinking Big Ten title. They're thinking national championship. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, gonna be interesting. <laughs> You know, and you look at you look at where they are, and of course they have that they have a big game next week in Happy Valley, and that's going to be yeah, that's a right. huge game for them. Uh, and that leads me to believe cool. that they'll they'll be judicious in how they play. But I think you're right. Jim Harbaugh is a guy uh, is uh, is a guy that's going to be uh, is is an us against them mentality guy. And uh, I think that that uh, you know that's going to play a factor in how much attention to detail Michigan's going to have in this game. Uh, all right, I'm going to I will throw out some a couple other ones that I think make some sense. Uh, yeah, the biggest it would be the biggest upset. We did try to do some research on this. Uh, Purdue the last time they were a, that this big of an underdog. I don't think they've at least based on our data have never been more than a 30-point underdog at the big house or against the Wolverines. 1976, one of the great upsets you talked about, Purdue beats uh, the number one Wolverines, Bo Schembechler's best chance for a, he for a Heisman Trophy. Well, that too, but also Rob Lytle, the running back, and, uh, oh, and Rick Leach, the quarterback, but uh, Purdue beats them. Uh, and it was Bo Schembechler's <laughs> best chance probably for a national championship, something that eluded him. But Purdue wins that game as a, as a, and it's a little bit hard to research exactly how many point Purdue was an underdog. I, I think it was well over twenty five, but it wasn't. I don't know that it was thirty. I do know that uh, the nineteen ninety one game. I think it was. Uh, uh, that was a Desmond Howard. Yes, Desmond Howard's yeah. year. Uh, and of course, the pose, uh, um, and uh, and Purdue loses that game uh, at uh, uh, forty-two to nothing. And they were they were about a twenty-eight point underdog or twenty-seven point underdog. But in that thirties, is rarefied air. We do know that nineteen seventy-four. Of course, Alex Agassi <clears throat> Purdue beats Notre Dame as a thirty-four point underdog, thirty-one to twenty in South Bend when they scored. 24 points in the first quarter, Tom Dean Hart. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. But now, now, Alan, according to Mike Carmen's story this week, in the last decade, just overall games, <clears throat> Purdue's been a 30 point, 30 plus point underdog two times 2014 versus Notre Dame at Lucas Oil. They were a 30 point dog. 2013 at home against Ohio State, they were a 31 and a half point underdog. Alan, they were shut out that day. Last time Purdue's been shut out. Also, that's the date you told me that your daughter helped lead the West Lafayette Red Devils to the girls' state soccer championship. And that was but funny you mentioned that, and you didn't even say anything. It was 10 years ago today that uh, West Lafayette won. So that was a uh, that uh, that was 10 years ago today. It was the last time Purdue was shut out. They were behind. All I remember about that is after West Lafayette won the, set, won the girls' Class A soccer championship, that by the time I got to my car, because I was down watching it and I didn't join the game till halftime, they played without me. Amazingly, Tom, I don't know how how Purdue football could possibly do that. But I get in the car 
And I think I, 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 you know, it was the days I think you probably was listening to it on headset. But I turned it off and, and, and literally two minutes into the game, I think, and two minutes on the clock, not uh, the game clock. I think Purdue's down 14 to nothing. And that was 56 love. Uh, and we, we don't want to remember Purdue fans don't want to remember that. But you talk about those two games that are over 30 point underdogs. They covered one of them, though. They did cover the game, I believe. In the loss to Notre Dame, they they did not cover it. Obviously, in the fifty six nothing loss. Okay, I got yeah, that, I got I, 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 I got a buy sell for you, Alan. Are you buying or I guess I guess you think they are. I mean, anyway, are you going to buy or sell that Purdue's going to score fourteen points? Ah, uh, the offense has scored. They only scored seven points. The offense last week. The other touchdown was on a fumble return. They scored seven points against Ohio State, Alan. And yeah, I, the, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm buying that. I think they might get uh, 12-ish. <laughs> That's kind of the number I keep coming up with. And they may need a, a a scoop and score. You know, we talked about one of the great positives about this team has been produced bookend defensive ends, and they made a play, made several plays last week, including a touchdown because Kyder Jenkins uh, doing that was a uh, was one of the few uh, bright spots, certainly, of last week's get loss at Nebraska, but uh, I don't think so. I think it's going to be hard to get 14 points to produce offenses. So, but, you know, this is, again, one of these lightning bolt games. If something's crazy, have look at the Indiana-Penn State last week. Yeah. How crazy that was. In terms of blowing coverage, things that Penn State doesn't do, you know, uh, early on, uh, Indiana snuck, snuck them, uh, snuck them past a couple long touchdowns, touchdown passes where Penn State just was in the wrong position. I don't see that from Michigan very often. You talk about, I know Chris Ballas talked about this being one of the best defenses that the Wolverines have ever had, and he's even talking about the 1997 co-national championship team or national championship team as the Wolverine fans like to remind folks uh they uh that was a dang good defense uh, uh as well with a Heisman trophy winner at winner as a defensive defensive guy so that that is what uh, uh I just don't think that's going to happen how about you what do you think on that front yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna sell that I, I think they're gonna knock not score two touchdowns um um I guess another interesting Subject Allen buy or sell will Purdue kick a field goal Saturday. They went yeah. over, they went over October, Allen Carpick, over five. The last made field goal was September 30th in Ross Aid, not too far from where I'm talking, against Illinois. Uh the struggles are, are well documented. Will Purdue make a field goal on Saturday, Allen? You know, I'm I'm a big believer in quirky things happen. Yep, they will. I'm going to buy that. Finally, it's going to happen because this is the kind of game where, you know, again, something strange will happen or in Purdue will get the ball. Michigan will fumble or something down in the 30-yard line and they'll have a chance for a 47-yard field goal. Now, you said, will they kick a field goal? Oh, I got to make, make a field goal. Make, make a, field a field goal. goal. Okay, I'll still, I'll, still, I'll still buy that. I think that they will. Uh, finally in that drought and uh, this game has got uh, 31 10 written all over it something like that and maybe that would be a plus based on what the spread is but uh, you know one thing yeah, I'm gonna buy one thing one thing produce obviously has no pressure I, I know if they lose they're out of the, they're out of the bowl business right it's their seventh loss so they've got no pressure right you right. know you know that storyline they got nothing to lose at all let it hang out play loose have fun all the pressures on Michigan. They're going to be the team that should be tight. So again, sometimes that can that can play into you if you're sitting in that in the role Purdue's in. And, and Michigan, like I said, man, they're they're feeling it. They've got no margin for error. They're supposed to kill Purdue Allen. They're supposed to blow the the lowly Boilermakers out and continue their margin. Stick it to America for how dare they have make these allegations. <laughs> so again, that that, that type of storyline. Sometimes you can see some some crazy things happen. Yeah, I, I do. I think it. I think it's hard for it to to last for sixty minutes. Uh, yeah. We both probably agree with that. But I think you will see some things again. I use that Indiana Penn State example from last week. I mean, Indiana is about as low as you can get right now. Are struggling so much under Tom Allen and 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 again. Different situation at Penn State. They caught him after the hangover of, of the tough mm-hmm. loss at Ohio State, where they just didn't didn't uh, take that game to the wire like they wanted to do. So that's a di- very different situation than Michigan coming off a bye. Uh, and uh, the Wolverines at night in the Big House uh, it will be a will be a big deal. So 
Mr. Dean Hart, we've found any other ones. You've got some good got ones. One. I, got, I, got, I, got, I got one. I got, I, got, I got one for you, Alan. By herself, are we going to see a true, legit trick play from Purdue? I don't think we've really seen one this year. A really, a real gimmick play. Yeah. Uh, right, because we saw one. Didn't we almost see one in a kick yeah. return, and they were going to no. do that, and they didn't set it up, or something happened? Yeah. I can't remember. No, I, the answer is yes. Uh, I, I think I think you'll see that. Uh, I'm going to buy that as well. That Purdue will run some form of uh, uh, kind of like, 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 like we're Purdue against Arizona in that bowl game, that Foster Farms bowl. I'm not talking about a, a, a simple like halfback pitch back the quarterback for a pass or something. A really fun gimmick play, you know. Well, that that the uh, fumble ruski play or whatever they call that right before awesome. halftime that Rich Rod. Former Michigan coach, and he coached in that 2008 <laughs> game. There's there's ties everywhere you go with that Purdue win over over. Uh, you know, I remember Joe Tiller called him the Snake Oil statement because of Roy Roundtree uh, and that recruitment. It's amazing how the world has changed in college sports since then. Now it's just a way you, of life. You, you, you but but you're right. No, I, I think that fumble ruski play right before halftime that Jeff Brom looked like they were going to kind of you know run out the half and all of a sudden DJ Knox, I believe it was, is running down the sideline for Purdue. Uh, yeah, that way I I'm not sure they're gonna get to that level. I think I think you may see the pitch back or the double reverse type deal. Uh maybe on that front. I do think for Ryan Walters and company, one of his biggest challenges, and you know this far more than I do, is just the boilermakers have got to find a way to win some games down the stretch, or at least keep the attention, keep the, you know, keep the focus on this football team uh, uh, and trying to make progress. And that may not make fans happy. Uh, I get it. Uh, you know, not the fact that you're not going to get in all likelihood get to six wins. I get that, but you, you want to leave these last three games and we'll probably hit start talking about that next week about can Purdue. Yes. Purdue has a chance to win still this last three games. It's against three teams that will be in its wheelhouse, so to speak. Uh, and that'll be an important thing for foundation building in in a in in and maybe be able to turn the tide of the way that this season has gone, which has been disappointing in terms of wins and losses. So I got one. I got, I got one more. I got one more for you. Alex. All right, one more, my friend. Go ahead. I or sell Will Hudson Card pass for over two hundred yards. Know this: Michigan has not allowed anybody to throw for two hundred yards this year, and uh, Hudson Card's coming off, you know. A, a game in Nebraska where he only had 100 yards passing. So, and yeah, as a matter of fact, Alan Hudson Card hasn't passed for 200 yards in either of the last two games. So, uh, again, Michigan has not given up a 200 yard passer yet this this season. Will Hudson Card be the first quarterback to throw for over 200 yards against Michigan this year? Yeah, great note. I, I no, I, 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 I'll, I'll buy that he will or. I mean, I'm going to sell that he'll do that. And, and Hudson, you know, there's a lot going into what Hudson's had to take on this year. We still don't know for sure how healthy he is. Uh, uh, I, I think that that's been part of it. And we're not making excuses. It's just been tough. Uh, you, we've had yeah. to have challenges at receiver, et cetera. No separation. That was a huge problem. It seemed like last week against the uh, course too. Offensive line. So, but no, I I don't see that happening, and that's not being a criticism of Hudson Card. I think if Purdue's going to make a three or four quarter game of that, he'd probably better find a way to do that because I think running is going to be going to be challenging. It always is against the Wolverines. Uh, I think the way the best way that Purdue can can stay in this game is is uh, Jenkins and Scorton making a play and and getting an early fumble or catching catching Michigan napping a little bit in special teams somewhere uh that's where you may get some points all I know and I'm going to digress one more time I've been to I think I've only been to three games in my life in the big house and I've seen Purdue score a total of six points and two of those games were by Big Ten championship games in essence 1978 and 1980, Purdue won those games, either one of those games, and they go to the Rose Bowl or have or they have the inside track to do. And I also saw Jim Everett play there in 19, against Jim Harbaugh in 1985 to 47-0. Uh, and this has nothing to do with 2023, but my point is it's tough for any team in the big house. It's tough when you're outmanned, and Michigan has uh, got a chance to to make it. To, did, uh, did, 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 did Drew Brees ever play in the big house? Yes, he did. He played in 1998, a 38 to 12 
excuse wow. me, 1999, 38 to 12 loss. Uh, Purdue got off to a good start with a pass to Vinny Sutherland in that game, but got I mean that was a game that was that was Purdue. I think was ranked in the top fifteen, and and there was a lot of hype going into that game, and and uh, Michigan yeah. stuck it to him. Uh, you know like who that quarterback was for the Wolverines that day? Um, Tom Brady. Was, uh, Tom Brady, and uh, they took uh, they they made not completely easy work of Purdue, but the score got kind of lopsided at the end. Uh, Joe Tiller. That okay. was back to back to back losses to Ohio State and Michigan in the, that year. In, uh, that year in 1999, Purdue should have beaten Ohio State and Columbus did not, and then uh, got to, that was after getting beat uh, by by Michigan. Here's what Alan. Here here's what Purdue's offense is up against Saturday. Michigan's defense is number one in total defense, number one in scoring defense, number one against the pass, number seven against the run. There you go. Yeah, and, and that's why I just think it's going to be tough. You, you, if they score, if Purdue gets two true offensive touchdowns, that's going to be a heck of an accomplishment. Uh, I'm talking about, and you know, do I see a 70 yard drive in my in Purdue's future pool? I don't know. I just don't. I, I could see a broken play, or I could see something strange happening there, kind of like uh, again using that Penn State Indiana example. But uh, yeah. I just, uh, and again, I'm trying to trying to find the silver lining to all this. Purdue needs to get out and play. They need to compete. That's one thing. Whatever that definition is, they need to go out and compete against Michigan the best best they, it can, uh, and then hope uh, hope for the best uh, for the for the final three weeks of the season in all games that Purdue should be in and should have a chance to win. Uh, when you talk about Minnesota come calling on the 11th, Northwestern on the 18th, and Indiana. None of those games are easy based on what, especially the way the Gophers and Wildcats have been playing of late. Uh, but uh, it's that's why they play them, my friends. So, Tom, thank you. I, you know what? We turned this into something okay. So oh, I think no, this, it's it's yeah. this is at least interesting for ourselves. Yeah. We want to thank uh, Kyle Spray and the good folks at Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group. You can visit acrepro.com at 765-775-6502, or uh, that's where you can call Kyle Spray, or you can uh, go to acrepro.com. We'll see you next week as we look ahead to Purdue, Minnesota, and I think it's Military Appreciation Day. Uh, and again, uh, we're into the month of November, so that's a very, very special thing as well. Uh, for football and uh, we appreciate all of you for watching and listening and have a great rest of your Wednesday and we'll be back next week for acrepro.com.